Hi. I'm Chris from Air Windows, and hey, you can do this. Because this time it's Air Windows parametric. So here we are. Now, I am busy doing a whole bunch of different things. I'm going to try not to be scattered. And I'll hopefully burn right through this and then move on to the other stuff I'm working on. In particular, I have made some great progress with that meter thing. Anybody who's following my live streams, uh, go and check the recent ones out and you will see that's really going somewhere. I feel like maybe this upcoming week in preparation for actually releasing meter, I'm going to use the, un the live streams to kind of unwind instead. Like maybe I'll do Minecraft playing or something, as I sometimes do. But what we've got here is parametric, which is essentially the same thing that you're going to get in console X. Remember how BiQuad um, stack was the type of uh, parametric filter that you're going to get in console X? This is even closer because now you have three of them rather than just only the one. It's also closer in that these are not smoothed. Because the idea with running that many bands of parametric EQ is to be able to do it all across the entire mix. Like the whole thing is going to be just saturated with these little controls. In fact, Console X is going to have four of these per channel. This is only three. But four parametrics per channel adds up to so many little filters, remembering, of course, that each of them have three separate um, biquad filters built into them to get the sound that they do. So it ends up being kind of a lot. But why would you want four filters per channel when some of this stuff that I've done, like uh, console LA, MC, and so on, were emulating classic consoles that didn't have nearly as complicated a sea of knobs across the entire mix? And the answer is because, well, when people started going over to the SSLs, they sacrificed a little bit as far as the sheer quality of tone, but they got a level of control that you didn't really see again until the DAW. And of course, now with any DAW, it comes default with all of the EQs and things. They just don't sound like those EQs because they're not following the same principles. But we can fix that. So I've got a guitar sound. And let's play with the guitar sound a little bit. And I will turn the plugin over to you after that. So here we have a nice little guitar. And there are various things we can do with this. Now. We might feel that it's lacking in lows or low mids, and so let's do a little fishing expedition on that. You'll notice that this actually goes down to the base. The console X version will have a distinct and separate control just for bass, but this one's just a little wider. It extends a little bit farther. And we don't necessarily want to enhance this. We can do the usual um, searching for areas of power again, or areas of preponderant energy. Doing this will widen it, make it cover a little more range, pulling it back, much like turning it down, the gain on the low mid control will narrow it and cause it to be doing less energy. So what we can do is try to find a unpleasant frequency range. Right, that's fairly unpleasant. And then we'll cut it slightly and start playing with high mids. Same deal. We'll turn it up and go fishing, this time for the chug in the sound. And we'll tighten it up. And 
and that's definitely sort of the chug region. It's a little lower, and that's higher. But right in the middle there, you have the pick attack jumping out, and this is something that's known for like metal guitar mixers. You find it there. So what I'll do is I'll let it go back to where it's doing chugging again, and then we'll dial that up a little bit. Because it's going to get right back into it quite soon. Again, here's the sound. And I'm going to do a thing here where I'm dialing in sort of the area before it becomes obviously adding chug to it. And then we'll jump over to trouble, because what we might want to do is take away some of the, in, the obnoxious highs here. So let's go find them. That is extremely unpleasant. And we can widen it a little bit. A ready kind of sound. Just isolate the obnoxious qualities of this. And then we cut it. We'll cut it all the way. And then bring in just enough of it. And then finally, we can use the dry wet, and this is what we started with. And this is what we're able to use parametric, or indeed console X is going to do the same thing. To do that with it. Although we could also widen the cut in the low mid a little bit. Pull it down a little bit more. And again, here we've got our guitar sound, and this is how we started. So this is how this is why you use like your SSL style parametric EQ. This is why everybody went for those consoles when they came out, rather than just having like a treble knob and a mid-range boost or whatever. You could do all this sculptural stuff and turn it into this. And that's giving the same idea of what the guitar is doing, but it's taking up less space. And it's designed in such a way that it can sit in the mix, doing what that guitar needs to do in the mix. And so we're going to bounce over to a different kind of sound just while we're doing this. Let's see, give me a second, and we got it. And here we're going to quickly put everything back because we now have a drum sound. It's not the most exciting drum sound in the world. We also, give me a second. can fool with the gain because that's louder than that guitar was. That was my shifting of bits gain control that I've got in there. So what might we want to do? Let's first look at the low mid. And we can use this to boost low frequencies because this one goes down to the bass there will be a separate one in console X to do this, but this will cover the same range. However, I'm not sure I necessarily want to do that. I can, but I could, might also want to pull out low mids. And where would those be? We maybe 
don't want this frequency range. Again, preponderant energy, but that's not doing musically useful things. We can widen it, or we can narrow it to just about this one resonant frequency, and then cut it. And it ends up accentuating some of the lows because we've taken some of the blur out of the situation. Now, what can we do with a high mid? Well, we're probably looking for interesting things in the snare drum. So we'll tighten it up a little bit. I feel like it's a little better down here a bit. And we can get into a real 80 zone with that one. Hype it up a lot, then return it to the center and bring just a little bit of that quality in. Not so much that it's obvious, but enough to bring that character in, is how you would go about doing this in a proper mix. Again, we're going for this. We'll add more. And now, let's find things in the treble to either add or remove. So here's our treble. Seems like we can also find the click on the kick drum, but you'd want that for the kick drum microphone rather than these room mics. So, here's where the glitter on the hats live, but what we might also do is find a more unpleasant part of the hat sound and cut that. Not really that, but... Kind of like that. The resonance is a little tighter in this one. And then, take it out and remove some of that from the hats so that the higher frequencies poke out more relative to what we've removed. And so that is a quickly arrived at drum sound, kind of like we did the guitar sound. And now I will put it back to full dry, because unlike Conselect, this one has a dry wet, because you get 10 controls on the Air Windows Consolidated plugin, and so this is designed to fit in with the clap and VST3 people, people are getting to use. So here's our full dry. And here's what we did with a bank of parametric EQs, kind of like you would do in console X, or if you had a proper SSL console, if you had a spare million dollars and like three phase power lying around. You can do this. And we probably exaggerated a little bit, so... Pulling all of those back just a little bit. You can also tighten the resonances to have less of an effect. Or broaden the resonances rather than just boosting. Both of those go up for more and down for less, whether it's narrowing, or whether it is attenuating. Here is the resonance on that.
And that's how that's done. So, Air Windows Parametric is, again, a kind of preview on what I'm working on bringing out. And like I said, I have a bunch of things in store that I'm working on, and I'm just trying to give you more and more pieces of that while still working on the rest of the stuff. Again, I think that next week is going to be real exciting. I have to put a bunch of work in on the back end to be able to demonstrate it properly. But the new metering plugin, it's kind of important. That's going to be an exciting video. My deal with the metering plugin is as follows, that um, I'll make this, and it's going to be GPL'd open source. And I like people joining the Patreon and stuff. That's all well and good. But as far as the meter plugin, which is kind of on a whole other level from just having another Audible toy to play with, if you find this as revolutionary as I think I am finding it, and you're able to follow me in the direction of being able to win the loudness war on the sound intensity and hit record sound side, because that's what we're going to be doing, is winning the loudness war by beating the loudness side, demonstrating exactly how much is lost when you do that improperly, and demonstrating that you can make more intense, louder, more passionate, and better selling stuff through doing it properly and not just using modern loud and aiden, you know, all that kind of stuff is a direction that the industry has taken, which I think has cost it lots of sales and it has cost it the ability to put out good music because the music is still there, but you can't hear it. And I can demonstrate that. And I will be demonstrating that. I just have to have all my ducks in a row for making such a grand claim. But in demonstrating it, and I'm going to follow it up with Console X as quickly as I can, which is only so quickly, because it's just me doing this. Although Suadara from Pample Juice has been helping me enormously with the metering, and a lot of this stuff rests on additional open source out there, it's a great thing to contribute to. If the metering stuff, like, turns your world over, you have to tell people what you're doing, why you're fighting the loudness war in this way, and making records that all of a sudden sound more amazing than you've been able to do in years and years and years, and then tell them about the meter that you're using to do it, because we are going to try to change the sound of recorded music. As has happened before, and it's high time it happened again. But that is for next week. So I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.